Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we're actually going to be diving into a truck that is very odd, and I would never have expected it to come to this game, but this is a all-electric semi-truck built by Max Mike 181 that is obviously heavily inspired by the Tesla semi-truck. Now, it can tow trailers from behind. You can see it has a kind of bumper level hitch but it also has a sort of a carrier to put either a high or low semi-trailer hitch there uh, as well. Now, really, there's not much here in the way of, like, what you would see behind the cab. There's really not much. It's just the batteries that are, I believe, all set down in the floor to sort of keep the center of gravity low. Now, there are a couple of suspension options, and you can lift it up a little bit and put mud tires on it, which we will do. But the torque of this thing is absolutely ridiculous, and I think that's going to be the most surprising thing about it to you guys. So let's go ahead and start it up. There's not really much to start up because all it really does is make a electric motor whining noise. As it, It's not even really much of a whining noise. It's more of a whirring noise. And you can barely hear it as you drive it along. But it's still such an odd concept. Now, the engine is the all-wheel drive EV-6, which is six hub-mounted electric motors. And you can't change that. That is set. Now, there's two gearboxes. There's the Crawlerbox HD Gen 2 and the IX ECVT. Now, obviously, IX being Puppy Master, the creator behind the 3880, the IX Wrecker, the Mini Monster, all of those trucks actually helped develop this gearbox, and it's pretty much a variable gearbox with all variable ratios in between low minus, low, and low plus that you can basically go all the way up through the gears through. So we're going to probably start out with Crawler Box Gen 2 because it does a good job of showing you guys how much torque it actually produces in a traditional sense, like a traditional gearbox-based sense, and then we'll switch to this later. Now, suspension-wise, we have stock with front axle lift and raised with front axle lift. Now, what that front axle lift is, is actually you have your standard height right here, but if you're trying to approach a obstacle or maybe a short, sort of an undulation in the terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to clear, you can actually raise the front axle just a little bit more and clear it. So we're going to go with raised with front axle, and then all the tires you can use are 36 inch, but the tires we're actually going to go with are the 36 inch Caterpillar 770G tires. Now, very small version of that tire, but it still works very well. Now, let's see, winch-wise, we're going with Autonomous HD+, Plus, and diff lock is, an a or, well, engageable by default. I didn't say, in I, di I didn't mean to say enabled by default, but engageable by default. And then frame add-ons, you have the maintainer, small sideboard bed, small fuel carrier, and then, of course, your high and low hitches for semi-trailers. So we're going to actually leave those off as, as the trailer store will actually install whichever one you want to use for the trailer you equip automatically. Now, going into the roof options now, you have some fog lights, but I'm not really going to go with those. I really don't care for how they look. I think they really break up the, uh, the look of the truck a lot, or at least too much in my opinion. However, the color options are really cool because they're all matte colors, right? They're all matte colors, and since there's no, you know, uh, fuel-based engine up front... There's no radiator. There's no need to have a hole for the radiator or intercoolers or anything like that. Now, let's see. This gray is definitely iconic, but the lighter gray, I think, does a really good job of conveying what this truck definitely is. And, you know, being able to put beans on the dash is really freaking cool. Now, you can go with curtains if you want. I'm not necessarily interested in doing the curtains. I'm not really a big fan of them. But if you are, the option is there. So we're going to go ahead and leave the garage now. Fire it up again. It's always so weird to say firing it up with a electric vehicle, but this cabin, though, is huge. Like, the amount that you can see is, like, absolutely nuts. The amount of visual range you have is absolutely wild. Now, I'm going to face the truck that way, so it doesn't really, doesn't really complain when we try to attach trailers to it, but... As you can see, the IX uh, tag behind eight slots are compatible with this truck, as are the eight slot um, high and low saddle trailers. So let's see, we're gonna actually run with something fairly, something fairly big, but I'm not completely sure what we should do yet. I kind of want to use the default eight unit because I think it definitely does a good job of conveying, you know, how much weight you're pulling. 
and let's go from here straight to the cargo loading point and start doing a little bit of loading. Now, obviously, since this is an eight unit, you're pretty much unlimited on what you can actually load up as long as it's not too wide. Now, the Sequoia is definitely a great test for this trailer, but there are plenty of other things that are great for that as well. Like, for example, the railway sections, oversized cargo, and one of the coolest things is that you can do two full units of oversized cargo, and that actually bows the trailer. That is insanely heavy, and so that will actually give you guys a really good idea of the amount of torque that this thing has, because look at that. You literally, like, I haven't been on the gas for very long at all, and that torque kicks in and just sends the truck. Let's make a little bit of a wide turn. It's not necessarily going to matter with those stumps, but... Like, once again, look how incredibly quickly it picks up to speed, even with all that weight behind it. That amount of weight is not really an amount of weight that you would normally want to put behind a truck like this, and certainly you wouldn't want to put that amount of weight behind anything in the highway class. I mean... Just the fact that this thing is in highway class alone will make a lot of people probably wary of using it, but look where we already are. Like, look where we already are on the map, and look how much cargo we've already moved here. That's eight units of freaking cargo container. That is absolutely ridiculous, and I think the capabilities of this truck should 100% be applauded. So, we're going to go ahead and carry on into the mud now. And we're taking a little bit of a different testing route than we normally do, but I wanted to kind of change things up because this truck is definitely very different from the trucks that we would normally test. So I'm going to go into low plus with the diff lock on and see how it reacts to some mud. I know I'm definitely throwing it in on the deep end, but let's see. You know, we're actually encountering an issue that I didn't really foresee being an issue at the beginning, and that is the fact that the trailer is bowed so much that it's basically just getting stuck. You know what I mean? The trailer is bottoming itself out. One more time. Come on. You are just not going to do this, are you? That trailer is legitimately, like, done. It's done. Wow, it's done. Yep, okay. I think we definitely found the limit of this truck. Or at least we found the limit of the truck and trailer combination in the water. Well, it's got enough grip to go up on the bank like that. I didn't want to actually flip it over. That was not my intended approach at all. Now, I know it's kind of a backwards way, but we can get to the normal testing areas this way, which is what we are going to do. Now, I know that, again, normally we would probably come into this area from the opposite direction, but we'll just go over the hill tests. Z. Now, I'm pretty sure the hill test is going to be just fine for this thing, but I think, you know, it is a highway class truck, and I think, you know, as much as we, as much as we would like it to be something more than a highway class truck, it's probably going to end up staying mostly a highway class truck for the foreseeable future. Now, granted, I think it would be really cool to see, like, a monster version of this thing, but I think that's not really what Max Mike intended, and so I definitely think he intended it to sort of be a actual practical highway truck that could function in some off-road scenarios and be useful in campaign play, you know, modded campaign playthroughs, but at the same time, you know, wouldn't necessarily be some over-the-top ridiculous machine. And I think, you know, I drive a lot of over-the-top ridiculous machines, and this definitely is not one of them, but it's also, you know, one of the coolest vehicles I've driven in recent memory. So let's see how it does in some of these mud pits. First one, it does great. Like, first one, it does absolutely wonderful. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. How do the lights look? Oh, they look really good. They look really good, and the reflections off the water are really nice, too. Let's see if I can make my way out of that one. Not bad. Get the diff lock to turn off so we can accelerate a little bit and turn better. And you can just faintly hear the sound of the electric motors in the background. Ever so faintly hear. You know... I thought it was going to do much better than that. It, like, it was really excited to plunge into that mud, and then all of a sudden, it, like, all the momentum was just over. All the momentum was just done. Completely, 100% done. Thankfully, we're not far from the edge right now, and so we should be able to back it up. Or, at the very least, 
may be able to back it up. I say may be able to back it up because I don't think we will be. Yeah, I don't think we will be backing it up, actually, at this point. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and grab a, yeah, trusty Duramax. Oh, look! Engine sounds! What a relief! Let's see if I can encourage it to back up out of the mud. Thank you! You know, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate you being willing to follow me. If we could keep that up, that would be awesome. Absolutely wonderful. You know what? I gotta give this truck credit. Every time I use it, it just does great. Every single time I use it, it does great. All right, so that's the second time you've had to be towed out in this video, bud. Not looking good for your off-highway performance, but then again, it is a... Highway class truck. I keep having to remind myself that it is a highway class truck. Now let's try the dips obstacle. Now the dips obstacle, I really don't know what to expect. I, I genuinely don't know what to expect. Let's see. Hmm. I mean, it's doing all right. It's doing all right. Better than I thought it would. It buries the front end every single, you know, every single dip. But if it's not hurting it, I'm not worried about it. I don't really have any damage yet, and I also haven't high-centered yet. I'll tell you, it's getting farther than every single other truck in the highway category would. Easy. That weird, like, electric motor whir is so strange. It's literally the strangest thing. The strangest thing to listen to while you're driving a truck in SnowRunner. I can't think of any other sound that would be more strange than that to hear in SnowRunner. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, there it goes. I was a little worried that for a second it had, like, actually met its match, or at least that the front bumper had met its match, and I was like, no, please. All right, here we go. Not bad. Made it all the way through the dips obstacle. All right, now... It's time for what you guys have all been waiting for. The visit to the ever-popular bridge jump. Now, the bridge jump really is the most useless test in this lineup of tests. However, it's the most fun test in this lineup of tests. And so, that's where it sort of comes into play, at least in terms of testing this truck. Now, I don't think it's going to get all that far. I think it's probably going to make it a little bit before the barrels, if not all the way down to the barrels. But it's definitely not going to go over him. At least I don't think it's going to. Let's find out. Come on! Alright, there's neutral. Hoping for it to pick up a little bit more speed through gravity. Yep, actually right directly into the barrels. Directly into them. Directly. God, if this was truck bowling, it would have been almost perfect. Now, if you guys enjoyed this look at this truck, let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments down below. Also, hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.